That Movie Recap Hi! Welcome back to That Movie Recap and today we're going to review a 1979 science fiction horror film, Alien. Where in a distant future, the crew of the commercial spaceship Nostromo is returning home when they hear a distress call from a distant planet. The crew is obligated to investigate, after which the spaceship descends to the planet's surface. After a hard landing, three crew members leave the spacecraft to explore the region. Simultaneously with the discovery of an unknown creature's hive colony, the ship's computer interprets the message as a warning rather than a distress signal. Well, I, it looks like a warning. When one of the eggs is broken, the crew discovers that they are not alone aboard the spaceship and must deal with the consequences. So relax and enjoy. Out in the far reaches of deep space, a refinery with 20 million tons of mineral ore is being transported to Earth by the Nostromo, a commercial towing spacecraft, is en route to Earth with a seven-member crew in stasis. The canopies open to awaken the crew. Captain Dallas, Navigator Lambert, Warrant Officer Ripley, Engineer Brett, Engineer Parker, Executive Officer Kane and Science Officer Ash are among those on board. Mother, the ship's computer, awakens the crew after detecting a transmission from a nearby planet. The team is obliged to conduct an investigation or the penalty of total forfeiture of shares. Money. They land on the planet, sustaining damage from its atmosphere and rocky landscape due to company policy requiring any potential distress signal to be investigated. While Dallas, Kane, and Lambert investigate the terrain, the engineers remain on board to make repairs. They discover the signal is coming from an abandoned alien ship. Ash, can you see this? and enter it, losing contact with the Nostromo. Ripley deciphers a portion of the transmission, determining it to be a warning rather than a distress call, but is unable to relay the information to those aboard the sunken ship. Meanwhile, Kane discovers a chamber within the alien ship containing hundreds of large, egg-like objects. The egg has flaps on top, which open, revealing its insides. As Kane moves into for a better look, the strange lifeform inside suddenly leaps out, attaching itself to Kane's helmet, melting his faceplate. Dallas and Lambert transport Kane, who is unconscious, back to the Nostromo. Ripley, as acting senior officer, refuses to let them aboard, citing quarantine regulations. If we let it in, the ship could be infected, you know the quarantine procedure. But Ash overrules her and allows them to board. In the infirmary, Dallas and Ash cut Kane's helmet open, they find that a spider-like creature has attached itself to Kane's face, with eight finger-like legs, and a long tail, tightly wrapped around his neck. Despite his mouth being blocked, Kane is breathing normally. Ash attempts to remove the creature from Kane's face with a pair of forceps, but it merely tightens its grip, and is holding on so tight that it will tear Kane's skin off with it. Ash tries to cut off one of its legs with a scalpel, but a yellowish fluid pours out of the wound and begins to eat through the floor. That craft can eat through the hull. Out of concern that the acidic fluid will breach the hull, the crew runs several floors downstairs and find that the stuff's corrosive effect is neutralized after burning through several decks. Dallas says the substance resembles molecular acid, and Parker comments the creature must be using it for blood. It's got a wonderful defense mechanism. You don't dare kill it. Dallas is sitting in the Nostromo's escape shuttle, the Narcissus, listening to music, when he is called to the infirmary by Ash, because something has happened to Kane. The creature has detached from Kane's face on its own, and has disappeared. They found the creature later dead. The ship has been partially repaired, 
and the crew is on their way back to Earth. Kane wakes up with some memory loss, but appears to be unharmed. A horrible dream about smothering him. During a crew final meal, before returning to stasis, he suddenly chokes and convulses. What's the matter? <laughs> the food ain't that bad, oh, baby. Kane. <laughs> Kane starts to groan and convulse violently. While he lies writhing and screaming on the table, the crew tries to help and stabilize him but a bloodstain suddenly appears on the front of Kane's shirt. A small alien creature bursts from Kane's chest, <coughs> killing him, and escapes into the ship, with Ash preventing the rest from killing it. After ejecting Kane's body out of an airlock, the crew attempts to locate the creature with tracking devices and capture it with nets, electric prods, and flamethrowers. Parker, Brett, and Ripley investigate one of the lower decks and pick up a signal. They prepare to net it, but discover it's the crew's cat, Jones, hiding in a cupboard, and he runs away. Parker sends Brett after Jones because they may find the cat again. Brett finds a shed reptile skin-like object while searching for Jones. He finds Jones in a ship's landing strut hold. Brett doesn't know it, but a strange creature is watching him from above. Brett tries to coax Jones out when a large shape falls behind him. Behind the engineer stands a six-foot scaly monster with four limbs and an elongated head. Brett turns around and watches as the creature opens its mouth revealing a second set of teeth that bite him in the head and drag him screaming into an air shaft. The crew eventually comes to the conclusion that the creature must be hiding in the ventilation systems. Dallas enters the ducts in an attempt to lure the monster into an airlock, but instead he is ambushed and seemingly killed by the creature. After learning that the alien plans to systematically eliminate the crew members, Lambert begs the others to jump ship and escape in its small shuttle. However, Ripley, who has taken command, explains that the shuttle cannot accommodate more than two people. The shuttle won't take four. So she will continue with Dallas' plan to flush out the alien. Ripley learns from Mother that the company has secretly ordered Ash to return the alien, with the crew considered expendable. She confronts Ash, but Ash attempts to strangle her to death. Parker steps in and clubs Ash, knocking out his head and revealing him to be an android. Parker, Ripley, and Lambert reactivate Ash's head, and they discover that he was tasked with ensuring the creature's survival. He admires the creature's psychology, free of conscience or morality, and taunts them about their chances of survival. Parker incinerates him after Ripley cuts off his power. The remaining crew decides to blow up the Nostromo and flee in the shuttle. Parker and Lambert, on the other hand, are ambushed and killed by the creature while gathering life support supplies. <laughs> Ripley starts the self-destruct sequence but is stopped by the alien on her way to the shuttle. She retreats and makes an unsuccessful attempt to stop the self-destruction. With no other choice, she flees to the shuttle, carrying Jones, and narrowly escapes the explosion of the Nostromo. Three, two. As Ripley prepares for stasis, she discovers that an alien has wedged itself into a tight space aboard the ship. She dons a spacesuit and employs a gas to expel the creature. Before it can attack, Ripley opens an airlock door, nearly blasting the creature into space. However, it clings to the frame for support. Ripley shoots the alien with a grappling hook. But as the airlock door closes, the gun catches, tethering the alien to the shuttle. 
It pulls itself into an engine exhaust, but Ripley activates the engines and launches it into deep space. Parker. Following the recording of right. the final log entry, she places herself and Jones into stasis for the trip back to Earth. If you enjoy movies like this please don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That's all for now hope you enjoy watching. Thank you and take care.